And we're here with the best pound for pound fighter in the world, Terrence Crawford. Terrence Bud Crawford. He's 15 and 0 undefeated. One thing I want to point out is Bud can switch from orthodox to southpaw. Crawford, who's a looking kid. Maybe the best switch hitter in the history of the sport. Yeah, it's a big statement. Uh, he's, like I said before, he's Mickey Mantle for me. Wow. Gets nailed again. He drops him on his nose. And Kenny Baylor doesn't bother to count. He's knocked out. Again, a big shot by Crawford. Terrence Crawford. So Terrence Crawford is a guy you're going to see a lot more of here on Top Rank Boxing. He's a very, very good fighter. The current pound-for-pound pound king of the sport. But he's patient, setting yes. up the first round with a solid jab. Now he can land some power oh. shots like that. Left hand. Oh. Errol Spence Jr. Okay, Van here that wants to wiggle out of it. They call him the truth. He's lived up to the name. That's it. Alan Hudgens stops the fight. Now it's a million dollar smile and he's going to be in multi-million dollar fights in his future. Do you remember the moment where you first really, really hit a guy? Hit a guy and knocked him out. And he's, he was saying that he, can't, he couldn't move his legs. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. As an amateur, he won the Golden Gloves as well as three straight national welterweight titles. He became known as the Body Snatcher. Oh, God! Crawford was raised by a single mother on a street that has since been renamed to Terrence Bud Crawford Street. What he remembers is all those years wanting for you to say, I love you. Yes. Yes. And you didn't do it. Nope. While most kids were playing Street Fighter, Crawford was fighting in the streets. But, but go go out there and knock some heads off. I said he gonna be one little bad boy. And that's where it all started at. I mean, going in the street, putting on the gloves, me fighting in the alleys. Just a typical bad kid running the neighborhood. I went to school. She you, went, you used to get kicked out. Yeah, all the and then time. she'd get kicked out. For fighting? Yeah, he'd get kicked out. Just like when he hit the ground and knocked the person's teeth out. His upbringing was extreme, but a life of poverty can be far more painful than a few butt whippings. I paid the kids, I said, if y'all can whip butt, I'll give y'all $10 a piece. Terrence rose to the challenge. Couldn't nobody whoop him. What did he tell you then? He told you, Mom, I told you I'm the best. Filled me with rage. And every time I stepped foot in the ring or anything that I ever did, I just wanted to win so bad so I can prove a point to it. It was something in him, you can see it in him, but it took a while for us to realize what he had and what it was. The undisputed king of the Nebraska streets was determined to use his gifts at the next level. A three-time U.S. National Amateur Champion, and he's only 22 years old. So here we go, round one. A southpaw with a knack for inflicting early damage, then pouncing and putting his opponents down in the opening rounds. Nice uppercut slipped in by Spence and another one. Garcia's down. Three. Oh. Shortly after turning pro, Crawford suffered a setback. We've been shooting dice with a dangerous crowd in North Omaha, and then returned to his parked car to count his winnings from the game. Your life changed in very different circumstances in 2008 after you got shot, is that right? Correct. Crawford and his friends returned to his car to leave the game, only to be caught between two rival gangs. Crawford took a bullet to the head. The near-death incident only strengthened Crawford's drive. 
They told me he was lucky because uh, I guess the bullet went in and bounced off or something. That head was hard. Yep. I, I think he's the greatest switch hit ever. I think he's the best finisher in boxing right now. I mean, he's special, like a Sugar Ray Leonard was special, like a Penel Whitaker was special, like a Roberto Duran was special. Controlled from start to finish by Omaha, Nebraska's unbeaten Terrence Crawford. There's the really good guy ones and the special. This bout is over. And he's a special one. things that we saw in a very professional bout for Crawford was his ability to finish when he had his man hurt and he's got it all in his first real test Crawford announced his arrival to the boxing world unbeaten Russian Habib Alakberdiev came down with a bad elbow he was supposed to fight hard punching greatest press shot of Colombia Terence Crawford who was scheduled to be in another fight on the undercard moves up for the biggest test in his developing career. Some people think Prescott is too experienced. Some people think Crawford is just too good. That's the fight that uh, a lot of people started taking notice of who I really was. Uh, and that's the fight that put me on the, on the mainstream. He's the fighter from the middle of the country, Terrence Crawford, who's been built up and is undefeated. Is he real? Because Prescott is a world traveler and a real tough guy. Hasn't faced anybody with the quality that Bradis Prescott has demonstrated in the ring. Crawford and a beautiful right hook on their left eye. Now Prescott has that cut outside the left eye. Ringside behind us tonight, Mike Dyson. Boom, perfect timing. You don't shy away from contact. And, in fact, you, you like that kind of contact. What kind of mindset is that? When it's time to fight, it's time to fight. At the end of the day, it's going to be me or you. So it's a big win for Terrence Crawford. Stepping up in class. Originally, he was to fight on the undercard. He possessed that rare combination of knockout power in the hands of a high IQ boxing tactician. The true L. Spence Jr. And we are off. His highlight style finishing moves Finish him. made him an immediate star. Big shot through the body after that there. one. Now, Oscar that's hard. He kept trying to come forward. The problem was he came forward and kept running at the punches. After that, he went on a tear through the division. Spence built himself up one fight at a time. Knockout after knockout. A number of people thought Errol Spence, the future of the welterweight division, Devastating power, speed, he's the goods, he looked like the goods again tonight. With Adrian Bronner's recent departure from lightweight, and with Crawford's spectacular performance against greatest Prescott at junior welterweight, Terrence Crawford is viewed by many, including me, as probably the best lightweight in the world. this stuff this isn't a guy who's like like some fighters like distracted by a lot of stuff outside of the ring like this is his whole life he thinks of himself like a pit bull after the surprising win Crawford was in line for his first title fight and now a hero to a nation a legend to a country the reigning and defending WBO lightweight champion of the world
there have been a hundred plus years of boxing. So Very think. rare for a guy who's been around for a while to say a guy who's presently fighting has the best instincts he's ever seen. He's the most instinctive, if not the most, one of the most instinctive fighters I've ever seen. His physical talent is, is you know, is up in the stratosphere. But Crawford with a really nice uppercut got in there, testing that jaw again. The things he can do. He's a junkyard dog, too. A natural fighting genius, Crawford's instincts are perhaps his greatest asset. During the fight, he switched seamlessly between southpaw and orthodox. Burns just can't get on top of this one. You know, Ricky Bannon was a great power hitter from his side of the plate, left and right, in baseball. Well, that's what Crawford does. Not just his ability, but his IQ, his his cerebralness, uh, his ability in that area, how he lands such clean shots, shots you don't see, the right shots. The new yeah, there it is, Tommy Spielberg, the world champion of the world. A moment of history for the American. The first Omaha born and raised world champion. It was thoroughly deserved. It was highly efficient. Being selected by many, projected to be a top of pound for pound best. Because there's so many talented people, there's so many athletic people, but to be a champion, you need everything. You need gifts, you need athletic gifts, you need a sharp mind, you need a, a passion for the technical aspects of the game. Getting into boxing, how did that come about? How did boxing come about? Oh, uh, my dad got me into boxing. Errol's father was a tremendous influence on him. Standing by Junior, every step of the journey. A journey that began in a small gym in Texas. You don't have that work ethic, you never keep it going. You always fall short of your expectations. And saw Errol Spence Jr. transform himself into an Olympian. Errol has credited the Olympic experience with preparing him for the pressure of fighting under the bright lights. You talk to the uh, the other Olympians, they all tell you he's the hardest worker on the team and there's a very, very big upside with Errol Spence. Went through the Olympic Games, he got to the uh, to the third round of the Olympics. Errol Spence is probably the best pro ready style prospect out of this bunch. I like the way he, you know, he's aggressive, he sits on his punches, gives you angles. Earl Spence Jr. is the best of all the American Olympians to turn professional after the last Olympic Games. This will be in the welterweight division. Cordova trying to figure out a way to keep Spence off. His run of dominance continued. No, he's not going to make it. Ten and out. Knockout. First round. Earl Spence Jr. Kept himself. Spence is now cutting the distance a bit faster, a bit quicker. Pretty good shot right there. And now it's got. As he climbed the ranks. And it put a loose right on his back and Rafael Methodically Ross destroying each rung of the ladder that separated him from his title. Earl Spence Jr. Seventh time he's knocked out his opponent in the first round. Terrence's switch hitting style came about when he broke his right hand in a street fight as a teen. When that happened, you know, uh, my coach, he was like, well, you ain't going to be able to be in the gym for some months. I was like, no, I ain't. So I just go in there and work on my yeah. left. And that then next thing you know, the left, the left was stronger than the right. When the right, now I had to get the right back strong. But Terrence Crawford looks like a great fighter in his the prime. The you want to see in Crawford tonight, although we saw that 140 was, the one is coming from 147 to 140, he's coming from 135 to 140. Can Crawford bring his power from 135 to 140 and be successful? The reigning, defending, undefeated WBO lightweight champion of the world, Terrence Bud Crawford. Each fight was billed as a new toughest opponent for Crawford. Terrence Crawford, that he's the best lightweight in the world, the champ of the division, and Beltran is his most worthy challenger. 
That's what you get tonight. And if you're wondering how it is that Terrence Crawford could outweigh Ray Beltran by six pounds when their upper bodies look virtually the same, look at their legs. Crawford doesn't allow his opponents to corner him. Makes it tough to corner him because Beltran did a decent job of cutting off the ring. And right before he was going to beat Crawford to the spot, Crawford just turned into a southpaw and got out the other way. Not only does he change to the opposite hand, he's just as deadly from one side as he is from the other side. The body control pivot. Beltran represents his stiffest test at lightweight. You know, he just keeps coming, keeps trotting. And the, the crowd is kind of uh, reacting with that same kind of energy. One more try for a big shot. And the closing bell. As Crawford raises his gloves in celebration. His efforts earned him Fighter of the Year honors from Ring Magazine. So when when I see you doing those uh, those stair runs, you do that quite a bit, right? Right, every Sunday. He trains at high altitudes in Colorado, over 6,000 feet above sea level. Because the air getting thinner and thinner as you go and then the steps. You got some steps that's like this, that's small, and then you got some steps where you got to really reach. Terrence Crawford, last year's Fighter of the Year as chosen by the boxing writers is in action. Delorme against Terence Crawford, but look a little closer, because what separated Crawford so far from the also-rans has been not just a fighting heart, but a taste for combat. When the going gets rough, he seems to enjoy it. You knock him down when you knock him out. It's addictive, is it not? Six members of the 2012 U.S. Olympic boxing team were polled, asked who they thought was the hardest worker, most talented, most likely to go furthest as a pro. All six said Earl Spence Jr. I don't think I've ever seen that before. You've been the most talked about talent in boxing. It has just been a methodical job here by Errol Spencer. Because we know his offense is great, but he is not that easy to hit. He's not that easy to hurt. This is the equivalent of a 30-second timeout. Right. needs to see. And finally, he's seen enough. Hello, Spence Jr. Samuel Vargas had never been stopped in his career. We're going to see the Olympian who is undefeated in Errol the Truth Spence Jr. Until he ran into Errol Spence Jr. When you hit guys, it sounds like you're hitting a bag, there's a thud. And there it is, Vargas goes to the canvas, Six. knocked down for Spence, Seven. here in round Eight. two. Spence again, 15 wins, no losses, 12 by way of knockout. Another win by knockout. 13 knockout victories in 16 wins. Undefeated with 13 knockouts in 16 pro fights. Another fighter who had never been stopped before facing Spence. A man who has uh, come up with seven of his 16 knockouts in the first round. Only two of his bouts have lasted beyond round five. And a lot of people are saying, okay, this is the fight where we're going to see if Errol Spence is really the truth. Going to the head successfully and then back to the body. Watching a young guy like Earl Spence right now fight, man, I think he's one of the best, the best up and coming prospect in the game. Oh! Oh Spence capped off his 2015 by fighting for the fourth time that year. Barrera rocked Spence with an uppercut in the first round, setting off a back-and-forth war. No, sorry. Spence shook it off immediately. Then he proceeded to beat Barrera senseless. 
and it's just Spence stalking. It's like the predator closing in on his prey. Herrera had that deer in the headlights look. And Errol Spence Jr. with an impressive stoppage. His first fight of the new year was another clinic. Through five, 50 to 43 over Terrence Crawford in terms of punches landing. And that was might be the only one that matters so far. And he did it. That is a sensational sixth round knockout. He was now the WBO Super Lightweight Champion. Only your second fight at 140 that felt different than fighting at lightweight. I felt stronger. I felt stronger. 140 pound title holder Terrence Crawford had already signed to defend against Montreal based Haitian challenger Gary John in his hometown of Omaha, Nebraska. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times, above all, protect yourselves at all times. Let's go. Crawford cleared each challenge with such ease that people assumed the challenger had been overrated and not that Bud was just that good. Hard right hand by Crawford. Down goes Sean. First knockdown of the fight comes in the first round. Instinct, accuracy, relentless aggression. These are a few of my favorite things about Bud Crawford. And Tony is going to stop it. Good stoppage by Tony Reeves. Crawford dominated him. In fact, he, he was so dominant, it undermined the significance of the victory because people afterward were questioning quality. That's how dominant Crawford was. Both men in prime shakes. A true victim of his own success. Hank Lundy's a good, solid fighter. Crawford destroyed him, knocked him out. His last don't look good, Bo Terrence Crawford. Victory for Terrence Crawford. He says, See, I told you so. There were two belts remaining to become undisputed. Do you think that this is the fight that announces Errol Spence, not just to the boxing world, but to the to the world? This is a star. And Errol Spence facing his first former champ, his biggest fight ever. He told us that. Algieri was a rugged and seasoned warrior of the ring. A true test to the unbeaten truth. He's not able to find Errol too much in this first round. chance to take the number one welterweight ranking, forcing a mandatory match against champion Kel Brook. The last obstacle to Spence's dream. And down goes Bundu. That is not a knockdown. Errol Spence is looking to close out Leonard Bundu. This is the Errol Spence show, but Bundu is a wounded animal. And he drops Bundu, and 
and this one could be over. Oh my goodness, Bundu is done, and this one is over, as Errol Spence is now the mandatory number one to his welterweight championship. Now the number one challenger, Spence would get a shot at his first world title. Errol Spence going to England against a proven welterweight champion like Kell Brook. Well, you, you know Kell Brook was one of the bigger, stronger welterweights, and he's even had problems even staying at 147. Defending IBF welterweight champion of the world. It's the litmus test for Errol Spence Jr., the cool cat with the oozing confidence. So some really good punches landed already. From trying to drag Spence into a close, personal, hard fight. Showed a lot of toughness in that fight against Kell Brook. Kell Brook was undefeated as a welterweight. That was a genuine challenge. Kell Brook is an excellent fighter. Right hand for Brook. Looking strong here. Brook really dominating. For me in that round, looking really well. I think it's very close. Spence showed in that fight was that he is something special because the first six rounds of that fight were very even. Oh, good shot from Errol Spence Jr. there. Really applying the pressure now. Big left hook from Errol Spence Jr. Much to the dismay of English fans, Spence put Brook down and captured his first world title. He's hurt, that eye's playing in trouble. The eye, I think he's gonna sit it out. It is all over, and Errol Spence Jr. from the Lone Star State is a new star of world boxing. Congratulations. Taking a break to a guy who might have been the best walkerweight in the world and really cementing himself as a walkerweight champion. This is his third fight of the year, and he's openly campaigning to be the fighter of the year. How's his case? That would be the second time he'd be fighter of the year, yes. by the way. He was fighter of the year a couple years ago. And if he wins tonight, and the point is really how he wins, we all expect him to win. Freitas Prescott, Ricky Burns, Gamboa, Beltran, Lundy, Postal, Delorme. He's fought a lot of quality fighters, and he's dominated all of them. He wants to do something now that matches up to what Ray Beltran did. And there's a right hand over the top, and the crowd responds immediately. And we don't usually see him come out of start that early. Oh. A look at the wide variety of weapons in Terrence Crawford's arsenal. He ran circles around John Molina. He sees that kind of steady pressure is just a prolonged execution here. Crawford seems to be more or less landing at will. He is target pressure. There's Warren Buffett, and Warren Buffett thinks that Terrence Crawford is money. Oh, what a shot. What a body shot. How many more rounds do you give this one, Rod? Maybe two more at the max. A non-stop barrage of hooks, jabs, and uppercuts. Again, like Jimi Hendrix would just make up a tune because of his genius. Customato used to tell me, I thought he was the greatest boxing mind of all, and he was my mentor. He used to say, Teddy, the great ones can make it up as they do it. The match was a nine-round beatdown that culminated in a ref stoppage. That is in a frenzy. Mark Nelson's going to stop the fight. A deafening roar in Omaha. Wow. At this point, People were comparing Crawford to Errol Spence Jr. The only talent I see there that I think is special, that has the chance to be great 
and to compete evenly with a fighter like Crawford is Errol Spence. I'm gonna yeah, make a mistake, you lady. What you wanna bet on it? What you wanna bet Whoa. on? You can bet a hundred thousand on it. Let's I'm bet a million. Easy. Easy. Let's bet a million. You're getting easy. that money, right? Easy. Let's bet a million. Easy. Let's I want to see Earl Spence and Mr. Crawford go at it. Ooh, me too. That's going to be a fight. That's going to be a big fight. Tonight, making the first defense of his title, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning, the defending, and the undefeated IBF welterweight champion of the world, the truth, Errol Spence Jr. In his first title defense, he made Lamont Peterson quit between rounds. There's not another welterweight in the world to this point who proves he can stand in that kitchen and take that heat. And the fight is over. Errol Spence Jr. holds Lamont Peterson. And you can see At that was a end tough, of seven. tough decision for Barry Hunter. He wanted him to go out there, but too, too much love and compassion for the young man. Fighting at the Dallas Cowboys Ford Center, Spence wanted to make a statement in front of his home crowd. Making the second title defense against undefeated mandatory challenger Carlo Frisco, Ford Center, Errol Spence. It's one thing to win the moment, it's another thing to grab it, mm. grab it. Packed house, mm -hmm. everybody had this intense moment at the beginning of the fight, and he closes it down. Garcia was an undefeated four-division world champion, a true super fight, and massive chapter for both fighters' legacies. The current lightweight champion of the world, ladies and gentlemen, here is the undefeated and distinguished four-division champion of the world, introducing Mikey. Two top pound-for-pound -pound warriors in front of 50,000 screaming fans. Oh, left hook, Spence connecting. Uh, Arrow still using the jab to score points. And clearly this is Spence's fight. He's in control. He's dominant so far. The outcome was never in doubt. Spence imposed his will and won seemingly every round of the contest. Two undefeated champions go the distance. The truth. Errol Spence Jr. A unanimous decision. Next, a match for the undisputed lightweight crown against undefeated WBA and IBF champion Julius Ndongo. Take it in. Few things in sports are better than a homegrown world champion carrying the pride of his people as the large entourage comes right through the bowl section here at Pinnacle Bank Arena. Ndongo, Ndongo, <laughs> there he is, that man, right right there. He figures he's stronger than you. Correct. And what do you figure? He figured out in the first round that he, he, he mistaken. Build is a war, what we got was another destruction. Some people get their lead left foot outside the lead right foot of a southpaw. Not Crawford. Fight fire with fire. This is body shot. Oh my, what a body shot. Crawford is the undefeated, undisputed champion of the world.
Terrence Crawford is now the undisputed super lightweight champion of the world. From Omaha, Nebraska, Terrence Bud Crawford. The first man to hold all four belts in the division. Live from Los Angeles, it's time for the main event of the evening. Showtime! Sean Porter! Spence Ready? unbeaten 25 and 0 quarter at 32 and 1. Away we go! The two fighters engaged in a spellbinding war, seesawing back and forth. Porter the aggressor early in round four. be the difference maker on the scorecards. Spence said that's what he wanted to do. He will drop Sean Porter. Errol Spence Jr. and Sean Porter go the distance. He was now the WBC and IDF Unified Welterweight Champion. And then there's Terrence Crawford, now a three-division champion. He started off with the WBO lightweight title. He was the undisputed guy at 140 pounds. Had all four belts after he knocked out Julius Ndongo. And most recently, taking this WBO welterweight championship. Crawford would take on yet another unbeaten champion. This time, the lead-up was quite contentious. Good early defense from Benavidez. <laughs> he got out the way. That wouldn't have been good if Terrence connected with that with no gloves on. Wow. It just shows you that the dislike and the bad blood is real. Yeah. I'm glad he didn't connect. Despite the big talk from the challenger, Crawford was unfazed. We went over the adjustment. We, we went over the rules and adjustment. Keep it clean. Set yourself for that fan. Let's do this. All the talk is done. It's time to fight. Benavidez, Crawford. WBO Welterweight Championship of the World. Landing at will, beating his opponent to the punch. Doubles up the right hand that time, does Crawford. Barry works his way to the inside and included yet another body punch. Bud put his entire repertoire on display. I see Benavidez breathing hard, and I think Bud is in a great place. He came in, and Buck came at him. Crawford comes right back. Short left hook. In the 12th, after winning every round and embarrassing the brash upstart, Crawford closed it out. Some consider Lomachenko number one. They got it wrong when they when they gave Lomachenko fighter of the year when I won undisputed. You're not happy about that. I'm not happy about that. <laughs> Who's the best fighter in the world? Who's the best? People are constantly comparing you to Who's the best pound for pound fighter in the world? You think you need to not just beat Amir, but dominate in order to make that case for yourself? Khan was a former lightweight champion and a naturally larger man than Crawford. With someone who looks to be an all-time great in his prime in Terrence Crawford. The former unified super lightweight champion of the world. When Amir Khan took the other biggest challenge of his boxing career, he stepped up all the way to middleweight against Canelo Alvarez. He was winning all the early rounds, completely outboxing him, landing punches, utilizing the speed, and then there was just one mistake. But right away he made a mistake. Bang, caught him. 
what was billed as the ultimate test for Crawford turned out to be just another clinic from the champ. Oh, he scores a knockdown! Bob Crawford with a first-round knockdown! He went to his corner, he tried to come out of it, get prepared to go back into the fight, but all of a sudden, he didn't respond to his trainer, Virgil Hunter, who then called the fight, Teddy. Declaring the winner by way of technical knockout, Terrence Bowen. Seemed to spiral, and like I said, just watching him basically quit. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. Many questioned if Khan had quit, including Crawford. Um, I've been up there because I'm trying to win. You didn't quit. Yeah, you quit. He Tell quit. the truth. Nah, I didn't quit. So what happened? What happened? I mean, I think I was in my seat. Errol Spence was on top of the world. A violent crash overnight as a Ferrari flipped on a Dallas street. In that car was Errol Spence Jr. A car crash threatened everything. And can the video of that crash makes it look unsurvivable? Spence was miraculously alive. Spence survived the crash, but is in rough shape at a Dallas hospital right now. But questions about his boxing future swirled. In his return against Danny Garcia, Spence silenced the skeptics. Teddy, before the fight, you said you were most interested to see which Spence would show up after that devastating car crash 14 months ago. And Errol Spence does not remember that car accident where he was thrown from his Ferrari. He spent two weeks in the hospital. He does not remember being in the hospital. Introducing the truth, Errol Spence Jr. They call him the truth. Since arriving on the pro boxing scene, he's lived up to the name, delivering hard doses of truth with every devastating shot landed. The truth that his opponents simply aren't in his class. Spence is just ripping these shots. He's putting everything behind it. He looks like he's just starting to get more warmed up. The truth that he is the present and the future. I'm just saying, Listen. Spence one really outlands his opponents. The truth is on a collision course with history. At 27 and 0, legacy and glory are there for his taking. And still, the only defeated unified WBC and IBF welterweight champion of the world. biggest names had been ducking Crawford for years. So it was a wonderful treat for boxing fans when a real contender stepped up. He said, my legacy will depend on beating Terrence Crawford. This is the biggest fight of my life, and you got to win this one. Tonight's main event will change two lives forever. Porter is a workhorse. He's a grinder. He's a truck. You know, he's a horse. He, he's a tough son of a gun with will and determination, you know, and physicality. The former welterweight champion would be Bud's greatest test by far. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO welterweight championship of the world. Still and protect yourself at all times. Touch off the luck. Those eyes of Crawford lock in now. Can Porter pull it off? Or will this be Crawford's statement night? We find out right now. We are underway for the welterweight championship, and Porter comes right out. Terrence likes two or three rounds to get his game plan, gauge distance and range, and understand what he wants to do. And if Porter can steal some early rounds, it creates a sense of urgency in Crawford. As Crawford dialed in, Porter continued to exchange. And a guy who can hit a good shot right there from Sean Porter. 
Porter just able to get away from the uppercut. Good exchange on the inside. Punch for punch. It was a rough and tumble affair. Crawford lands a right hand. Good action here, round two. In the third, there was a clash of heads when Crawford switched to southpaw. Both fighters were cut. But for me, it was just a matter of time before Crawford was going to do what he did. Porter right now fighting a perfect fight. Being athletic, using his hand speed, using volume. The body control pivot. And all of a sudden, Porter goes face first into the neutral corner. Ole, Tess, Ole. Crawford continued to decode Porter's style. And now sharpshooting to the head is Crawford. With each round, Bud grew stronger. The hammer's about to drop. You don't see it yet, but it, it, it's going to drop. In the tenth round, Crawford showed the boxing world who reigns atop all others. Looks good on his feet, but not coming forward and firing at Crawford for the moment. There's the overhand right, and another combination! When I look at pound for pound, I look at every inch of it. And as far as being able to fight inside, outside, make adaptations, um, mentally together, I, I just look at you as number one right now. Magnificent accuracy by the champ. And he's stopping the fight. His father says it's over. Terrence Crawford has just stopped Sean Porter. No man has done that. Crawford just did it. As it stands now, Crawford has already amassed a Hall of Fame resume. A six-time champion across three weight divisions. The pound-for-pound pound king of the ring. Thurman, Spitz, Danny Garcia, all those guys just walked up to 154 <laughs> after seeing this performance by Terrence Crawford. So tomorrow night, it's the sensational Errol Spence against Jordanis Ugas, who's coming off retiring Manny Pacquiao. Ugas's boxing skills are obvious, but in addition to everything else, and I talked about fast twitchies earlier, Spence has those. He has the power, the southpaw skill. Errol Spence Jr. versus your Dennis Rugas for the unified welterweight championship of the world. Yeah, one of the top pound for pound boxers in the world, undefeated Errol Spence Jr. He's the WBC and IBF welterweight champ, returning to the ring after a 16 month layoff. This is the most active and aggressive we've seen Errol Spence in some time. Left uppercut, right hook, and again, Errol Spence with some sweet combinations. After a vicious back and forth. Sean Porter, oh, big right hand. And Spence is hurt. Spence, Spence is hurt. hurt. He was, I don't know if he was wobbled or off balance or what, but my goodness, what a sequence. Spence closed it out. And an uppercut. Who gets hurt? 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 Spence going on the attack! This would be the biggest win in the career of Arrow Spence. He fractured Ugas's orbital bone, and the fight was ended. Arrow Spence Jr. not only closed the eye of your Denny Zugas, but closes the show with a clinical effort here tonight, showcasing why he indeed is one of the best on planet Earth. After years of back and forth, the boxing world awaits the super fight of our era. Errol Spence versus Bud Crawford. Nobody brings it home like Joe Vincent. Nobody. Make it so.